Welcome to the National Headache Foundation's Cluster Headache Webinar. Today we are joined by Dr. George Urban, the co-director of the Diamond Headache Clinic. Dr. Urban joined the staff of the Diamond Headache Clinic in 1990, and he has since taken a strong interest in the treatment of headache with Botox. He is currently on the staff of St. Joseph Hospital and is a clinical instructor for the Department of Medicine at Rosen Franklin University and a lecturer for the Department of Medicine at Loyola University. He has lectured on various headache subjects throughout his career and is actively conducting research at the clinic. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Urban. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm uh, really privileged that I can, um, that you join me and I can answer some questions. I'm sure you'll have uh, several questions about uh, cluster headaches and uh, maybe some other headaches too. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm going to talk tonight about uh, cluster headaches, which is not a very common headache disorder, but I think it's very exciting uh, not because uh, it's exciting for me because it's easy to diagnose and easy to treat and nobody should uh, suffer from cluster headaches without proper diagnosis. Uh, first, I'm going to go over some slides so we can, uh, I can explain you most important features of a cluster headache. As I said, cluster headache is a less prevalent disease than a migraine headache, for example. Uh, cluster headaches occur maybe in about 0.1 percent of the general population, so it's very, very uncommon. Uh, it's a more male headache disorder, and ratio between male to female is about 3 to 1. Uh, so it means uh, three male patients, we see one female uh, patient with cluster headaches, which is quite um, rare. Uh, usually, a cluster headache starts uh, the late 20s as opposed to migraine headache when they start uh, in puberty. Uh, cluster headache starts a little bit later. Uh, typically, cluster cycles start uh, come in spring and fall. Uh, the most common months when a cluster occur are uh, September and October and then March also. Uh, headaches come in cycles. That's why it's called cluster headache, in clusters of bunches. Uh, and one cycle usually typically lasts, typically lasts for two to three months. When a patient has one to two headache attacks every day, every day for those two or three months. And then uh, so-called remission when you are headache free for about one or two years and then headache comes again same time uh, of the year. Pain comes suddenly. Okay? Usually there, there are no warning symptoms like with migraine. It comes suddenly, wakes you up from sleep uh, and uh, peaks in 10 to 15 minutes. So very abrupt onset and very quick peak. Uh, headache uh, lasts for about 15 to 20 uh, to 40 minutes typically and goes away on its own. And then you are headache free till next uh, attack. Headache is always on one side only. Okay? If it's not one side only, it's not a cluster headache. Um, it's a very localized, typically around um, eye, one, one uh, eye, and uh, in small location. I call it uh, one finger headache uh, because when I ask my patients, show me where's your pain, where's your headache, and they show me one finger, usually either above the eye, behind the eye, or in temple area. Headache doesn't switch sides during, during the uh, attack. They may switch sides from cycle to cycle, but not when having headache. Typically, uh, you get one to three attacks per day. And pain is described as excruciating, boring, sometimes burning pain. It doesn't drop. Pain is terrible, very, very severe. Female patient tells me it's worse 
than deliver, delivery pain. Um, during the headache, a patient uh, is very restless. Uh, other typical symptoms that, uh, that are present almost in every patient are on the same side as the pain is redness of the eye, tearing eye, congestion or runny nose, uh, swelling of eyelid and droopy eyelid, and sweating on the forehead and the face. All those symptoms are on the same side as the pain is. Uh, now I will show you a picture of the man uh, during cluster attack. You can see he's showing uh, where the pain is with one finger in the temporal area. His eyes are red, te uh, teary, sweating on the same side the pain is. You can see bulging uh, veins in the forehead um, and is in terrible uh, se uh, severe pain. Uh, during headache, they are very restless, or agitated. They pace floor as opposed to patient who has a migraine headache. During migraine, you don't want to move. Uh, during cluster headache, you move, you run, rock uh, back and forth. Uh, they um, press the uh, head where the pain is. Sometimes they even stab it or bang um, against the wall. I ask them what typically, how do you behave during a headache? And they describe me very bizarre things like running around, okay, they prefer cold, so they, uh, especially at night, they go to the bathroom, lay down on on tile, which is cold, or hug uh, the toilet bowl. Um, they sometimes uh, try to create some different pain to distract themselves from the own headache. Uh, as opposed to migraine headache, there are so many triggers. Uh, cluster patients usually have only few triggers. Typically, it's alcohol. Uh, headache starts after uh, uh, drinking alcohol within 30 minutes or so. So patients who do have cluster headaches, they abstain, they don't drink during cluster uh, cycle uh, because that will trigger the headache. Uh, the other common trigger is hypoxia, which means low oxygen level, which could be due to high altitude, so flying or residing, being in high altitude, skiing uh, in Colorado, for example. And other example we sleep apnea. Many patients with cluster headache have sleep apnea. They snore, they start breathing during the night, they don't get, they don't get enough oxygen the brain, and that can trigger uh, the headache. Uh, so I always recommend, uh, especially male patients, uh, to have sleep study done to rule out sleep apnea and help with that. Uh, I'll show you the last uh, slide which shows the typical timing of attack. Uh, more than 50% of patients will have a headache during nighttime typically about two to three hours after falling asleep, so around two o'clock in the morning. Uh, headaches come a very on a regular basis, every day, same time of the uh, day, and yearly, same time of the year, as I mentioned before, uh, win, uh, spring and fall. Um, treatment is very specific. Um, I'm not going to go to details. We can talk about it during your uh, question. Um, so um, I'm open now to any questions about cluster uh, symptoms, um, testing, uh, treatment, and so on. And if if you have any questions about other headaches, I'll be glad to answer it. Thank you, Dr. Urban. Our first question comes from Pat. Um, I was in a horrific car accident in 2010. I was in, at a complete stop and I was rear-ended by a truck that was going 50 miles per hour. I then hit the car in front of me and the car beside me. I think I also hit my head on the seat uh, belt buckle. Since that time, I've had constant headaches and I have seen four doctors. They still can't tell me why I'm getting cluster headaches. I have had MRIs and CAT scans. Nothing is showing unusual, but I can't get rid of the headaches. Can you refer me to anyone in the Dallas, Texas area? 
Hi, Pat. Uh, I, I'm sorry that you were involved in a car accident and you suffer from daily headaches. Uh, constant headaches are not uh, cluster headaches. Uh, cluster headaches typically start, last for an hour, two hours, they go away and come back. Uh, but post-traumatic headaches after some head trauma, uh, either uh, trauma by a whiplash or direct trauma of the head may cause headaches that don't respond to treatment and they are not migraine type or cluster headaches, they are mixed type of headache. Um, yes, uh, there is a headache clinic um, uh, in Dallas directly. You can see Dr. Uh, George Nissan, uh, you'll find him on the internet for sure. He was trained, uh, he worked actually at the Diamond Headache Clinic and he's seen a lot of cluster patients and also post-traumatic headache and I'm sure he will be able to help you. So again, his name is Dr. Nissan, N-I-S-S-A-N. -S Thank you. Our next question comes from Barbara. I'm taking a low dose of Neurotin that a neurologist prescribed and just started taking 200 milligrams per day after 100 milligrams per day for a week. Would there be any side effects at such a low dosage? Uh, hi, Barbara. Uh, are you taking uh, uh, Neurontin for cluster headaches or some different headaches? I believe it's for migraine. Uh, Neurontin is usually for migraine headache. Okay. Um, the dose of Neurontin is usually much higher than 200 milligrams. I would not expect any side effects on such a low dose. Uh, you need at least 900 milligrams a day uh, for both migraine headaches or, or uh, cluster headaches. And uh, typically I do increase those every five to seven days. Uh, so you still have uh, a lot of time to go up to higher dose, but at least you will need 900 milligrams. Thank you. Our next question is from Hope. I am a woman who began having cluster headaches at puberty and it ended when I entered menopause. It also stopped during, pregnancy, during both pregnancies and resumed shortly thereafter. Has there been any research uh, as it relates to hormones causing cluster headaches? Uh, hope um, cluster usually doesn't follow the hormonal changes as opposed to migraine headache when usually they start during puberty, uh, they get worse during uh, menstruation, better during pregnancy and better again uh, after menopause. So I think that you are exception <laughs> to this rule. Um, so typically they don't get better or worse um, in terms of hormonal changes. Uh, however, I don't see many female patients after menopause. Usually they get better, uh, the cluster get better after menopause. Thank you. Our next question comes from Scott. He'd like for you to explain um, some of the treatments that are out there for cluster headache patients. So uh, there are two types of cluster uh, headaches. Cluster episodic which means um, you get daily attack for one or two months and then you are headache free for one or two years. And the chronic cluster, when you get headache every day without any remission, day, every day, every month for at least 11 months. So the treatment is a little, little bit different. Um, first of all, because the attack lasts for a relatively short time, one hour. You need to take something which uh, works very quickly. Uh, the oxygen, high flow, 100% oxygen with high flow 8 to 10 liters per minute stops the headache within 10 to 15 minutes. It's very effective. But of course you cannot carry the oxygen tank with you all the time or everywhere. Uh, you can uh, keep it at home. Um, it's used to mask, okay, so uh, the nasal prompts are, are not enough. Uh, it's very effective. 
Otherwise, we are using injectable Imitrex. Works again, uh, 15 to 30 minutes. We are using some nasal spray like Zomic, Zomatriptan, or Sumatriptan. Uh, oral medication, either triptans or painkillers, really don't work because it takes at least one hour or more for oral medication to kick in. And the headache usually lasts for 40 to 60 minutes. Now, um, to stop the whole cycle or shorten the cycle, treatment needs to be started at the beginning. Typically, we use steroids within the first week of treatment. We use verapamil, which is a calcium, calcium channel blocker used also for high blood pressure, uh, and some other medication. For chronic cluster, lithium is uh, very effective, um, and also some other medication. Uh, medications is uh, you decide about medication depends on other medical problems and what uh, side effects you want to avoid. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mary Shannon. Since hypoxia is a trigger for cluster headaches, would hyperbaric oxygen help therapy? I mean, would, uh, would hyperbaric oxygen yeah. therapy help? Okay, very interesting. Um, as I said just a moment ago, the oxygen helps uh, even without high pressure. Uh, it has to be high flow. There are few centers that have uh, hyperbaric oxygen um, chambers available for cluster patients. However, it's very cumbersome to, you know, if you live somewhere where uh, you don't have this uh, chamber available, um, how would you get there? Uh, it's very expensive to have it at home. I don't think that anybody uh, would have it at home. Uh, but for studies or for experimental um, processes, you can use, they can use uh, the hyperbaric oxygen for treatment to stop the uh, attack, but not to stop the cycle. So it doesn't work to stop the cycle, but just uh, for it, individual attacks. Thank you. Our next question comes from Emily. I've tried nerve blockers three times, and I've been in the hospital four times for DHE treatment. What other treatments would you recommend, and would you recommend chiropractors? Is it for cluster headache or for migraine headache? This is for cluster. Okay. Uh, some patients who headache starts in the occipital region and then goes to the uh, one of the eyes, okay, and this cluster they usually respond to uh, occipital nerve block. Uh, not everybody, uh, but uh, those people do respond. DHE also may stop a uh, whole cycle. However, we use a uh, very specific treatment for chronic cluster who don't respond to DHE or steroids or other treatment. We use histamine uh, treatment. Uh, histamine is given through IV uh, infusion uh, for several days. Uh, you get two bottles of histamine every day. It's a slow infusion and it's kind of desensitization. So the same like if you are getting uh, allergy shots for some kind of allergy. So we are using this histamine but it takes uh, several days, sometimes even 10 days in the hospital. Uh, I think we are the only uh, center in uh, U.S. who does the histamine treatment. Thank you. Our next question from Nicole. Have you had any positive clinical experience with non-pharmaceutical treatments, including natural treatments such as psilocybin, LSA, or CBD? Hi, Nicole. Uh, for cluster, usually the supplement or non-pharmacological treatment doesn't work. Uh, we do recommend magnesium, high dose of magnesium. Uh, chiropractic treatment doesn't work for cluster headache. There are some experiments done and uh, also uh, some patients done it on their own with mushroom, for example, okay, or LSD. Actually, there was a medication called Sansert, Metisergite, which is not available in the United States anymore 
uh, it was very closely related to LSD and it was very uh, effective uh, for treatment, but because of major side effects, is not available uh, in states anymore. Uh, of course, you know, we do not recommend to use any uh, drugs like psilocybin or LSD, um, the, but there are some articles that you can uh, meet people on the cluster website when they describe their experience with using of uh, uh, this type of drugs. Uh, but otherwise, for cluster headache, uh, usually um, non-pharmacological treatment doesn't work. I think your next question, can you explain in more detail the how the administration of Botox works and why the treatment has been successful? Botox has been used for more than 15 years in treatment of headaches. Uh, for uh, tension headaches, migraine headaches, and also cluster headaches. We don't know exactly how it works. Uh, it has two different action of uh, mode of actions. First of all, is a muscle paralyzing effect. That's how we found out it works for headaches because uh, people who had Botox for wrinkles or cosmetic reason, okay they noticed that the headache got better. So we did studies uh, with patients with migraine headaches and indeed Botox do, does reduce the intensity of pain and the frequency of headaches. So besides paralyzing those muscles in the forehead and uh, in the back of the head and neck, it also gets to the brain and binds on certain receptors that are responsible or involved in migraine headache. Uh, Botox has been approved by FDA and insurance for treatment of chronic migraine headaches. So it means at least 15 migraine headaches per month, uh, not for cluster or tension headaches. Uh, however, um, we use sometimes it for, for tension headaches or headaches coming from a uh, neck area. Uh, chronic cluster don't respond well to uh, bot Botox, but I had some patients who I did Botox for chronic cluster and they respond. But uh, there are no studies done uh, for treatment with the Botox. Emily has had cr uh, chronic cluster headaches after, uh, and after 13 years she's finally gone headache free uh, for six months. After she tried tapering off her medications uh, while trying to start a family, she wants to know if there are any meds you can recommend for cluster patients while they're pregnant. Uh, the only safe medication would be oxygen. Uh, uh, during pregnancy, probably you will not have any clusters, um, but oxygen would be the most effective and safe. Uh, injectable sumatriptet or imitrex uh, has very short half-life, so it should be okay, although it's a category C, which means we don't know. Uh, but we have a um, large database uh, from all over the world showing that imitrex is safe uh, during pregnancy. Um, but Probably if you are not, if you have not had any cluster for a long time, you will not have cluster during, during the pregnancy. Okay, Jeffrey has had episodic cluster headaches for almost 20 years. Is there any understanding why the cluster headaches always seem to start in the spring or fall? He currently lives in the northern climate in Wisconsin, and he'd be moving to a different climate to help try uh, to get longer periods of remission. Uh, Jeff, unfortunately, cluster headaches uh, occur everywhere, northern climate or southern climate. Uh, there are a lot of studies done coming from Italy, for example, okay, which is much uh, southern uh, climate, and we are here in Wisconsin or Illinois. Um, why it starts or typically occur spring and, and uh, fall it's something to do with internal 
biological clock. Okay, uh, cluster is cyclical event. So uh, every day, same time. Every year, same time of the year. Something to do with the biological clock, which regulates those cycles. Uh, and probably uh, uh, the the uh, change in in time on uh, uh, spring and, and fall uh, it's one of those triggers but we don't know exactly why uh, why is that you know it's expensive to to move uh, somewhere else just because of headaches because headaches cluster headaches occur everywhere really our next question is from Anne. Uh, she knows that there is a high comorbidity between migraine and depression. What kind of treatment do you recommend to best treat both conditions? And also, is it best to use two different medications to treat two different symptoms, or is there an effective combination therapy? And you are ab absolutely right. It's a very high association comorbidity between migraine and depression, but also anxiety and other psychological issues. Uh, mostly patients who have frequent migraine headaches or chronic migraines, they, they will, will develop also depression. Uh, one of the first medications used for, used for migraine headache were antidepressants, all tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline, for example, or nortriptyline. They are used also for other uh, painful disorders. Um, we do combine medication for uh, specifically for migraine headache and antidepressants if there are people are depressed. Uh, sometimes we are using antidepressant in a uh, smaller dose for uh, just migraine headache without uh, depression. For pure depression, you need much higher dose of antidepressant that we are using for migraine headache. Uh, so in combination, it works uh, actually even better. Um, Every patient who comes to our clinic and is depressed, we do recommend to see a psychologist or psychiatrist uh, to rule out some other problems and to treat uh, depression uh, also non-pharmacologically. Our next question is from David. He is a 60-year-old male, and his neurologist prescribed endomethacin in a high dose. I think it was nearly 40, 40 milligrams. After feeling terrible, it was reduced to 25 milligrams three times a day. Can you comment on this drug and its side effects? He has an oxygen machine at home, which in most cases helps a lot. Yes, uh, indomethacin or indocin is an anti-inflammatory medication like Advil or Aleve. It's very potent, very effective, but uh, Ha, probably has more side effects than uh, ibuprofen, for example. Uh, typical dose what I'm using for cluster headaches is uh, 50 milligrams three times a day. You have to take it with food, uh, and if uh, having stomach issues or stomach problems, then something to uh, reduce the stomach acidity. Uh, but for some patients, it can be very effective. Uh, of course, you should not use it if you have uh, kidney problems or stomach ulcer. Um, 25 milligrams uh, three times a day. I don't know what kind of side effects you had, but of course if you have side effects, uh, you should reduce the dose. And if it's not working, not helping your headaches, then your physician has to decide uh, about some different medication. Are there any new surgical procedures for cluster? Uh, yes and no. Uh, cluster patients are usually uh, well treated by uh, pharmacological treatment uh, or histamine if it's a chronic cluster. Uh, only a few patients from our clinic had um, surgical procedure. Usually they are aimed to disrupt uh, pain pathways in the brain. Uh, so it's a complicated procedure and surgeons don't like to do it because there's high risk for some other complications. And clusters still can come back, so um, it's not very effective. 
Um, there are some other procedures like nerve blocks. They are aimed um, to deeper nerve uh, in the head. Uh, they are using uh, heat from um, radio waves or certain chemicals to destroy the nerve. Uh, but typically, nerve grows back and can cause more headaches. Our next question comes from Barbara. How do you diagnose people who have multiple types of headache? Uh, Barbara, very good question. Uh, well, it's up to the doctor to ask questions. Okay, uh, patient will come and tell us, "Well, I have a headache." If you are satisfied with that, that you will not be diagnosed properly. We do ask them, "And do you have another type of headache?" And third type of headache, and we analyze every headache. Okay, yes, you can have two types of headaches or three types of headaches. You can have migraine headache, you can have tension headaches, you can have headaches from exercising, for example. Okay, So it's very important to get a good, uh, good, good um, history and a diagnosis. Our next question comes from Shirley. Can you please give a primer on cluster with mixed migraine symptoms, how you diagnose, and the treatments. Surely, hi. Uh, unfortunately, females may have more uh, combination of cluster headache and migraine headache. So you can have a cluster cycle lasting for two months. In between, you can still have some migraine headache. And after cluster is over, you can still, you will get still migraine headaches. Uh, also, f women uh, with cluster have longer uh, attacks, maybe more frequent or less frequent, maybe more severe, and they may have also atypical features. Uh, but it's not uncommon that you have both uh, type of headaches. Um, treatment is uh, similar, but sometimes you have to sp uh, use specific treatment for certain type of headache. So, Let's say if you have menstrual headache, we use some medication for uh, your for your period only, uh, regardless of the cluster. So it's very important to really distinguish uh, that you have migraine headache and cluster or cluster or something else. It looks like we're coming to a close, Dr. Urban. Um, unfortunately, okay. we can't get to all the questions, but I would like to thank everyone for joining us. Um, we will have one more webinar. Uh, the 13th of November, and it'll be on the psychiatric comorbidity of a headache. And I'd like to invite you all to join us for that one. And to hear this uh, webinar, you can log on to youtube.com uh, forward slash NHF1970, sorry. <laughs> and we'll have everything loaded for you. Thank you for joining uh, us, Dr. Urban. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. And I hope that I answer your question.